Hello and welcome to the APSCC 2020 conference series. I'm Christopher Slaughter and I'll be your MC for this webinar, uh, but thank you very much for joining us today. Before we get started, we're going to have a few words of introduction from APSCC's president, Greg Daphner, who's also the CEO of GAPSAT. Take it away, Greg. Hello and welcome to the APSCC 2020 annual conference. It's a pleasure to welcome you to the start of this year's virtual event the first in our weekly series of webinars. We would prefer to be welcoming you in person, but nonetheless, we are delighted that you're able to join us online for what promises to be an excellent series of discussions about the state of our industry. The Asia Pacific Satellite Communications Council was founded in 1995. So this year marks our 25th anniversary as a members-run organization serving the satellite and space industry in the Asia-Pacific region. During that time, we've held our annual conference in cities all over Asia. So in some ways, the online space is just another venue for us, a variation on a long-established theme. With that in mind, as we would in a typical APSCC conference schedule, We'll be covering a lot of ground in this webinar series. Topics will range across a selection of issues the industry is currently grappling with globally, as well as here in the Asia Pacific region. Some of the sessions we'll be presenting will take the form of keynote speeches. Others will be panel discussions and some will be presentations followed by Q&A. The current schedule is online at APSCCSAT.com, and we'll be updating it regularly with new topics, new moderators, new speakers, as we roll out the webinar series. And if by chance you miss one of our live sessions on Tuesday, you can always watch the recorded version by entering your registration details on our website. Thanks again for joining us and we look forward to hearing from you with your thoughts on how we're doing. Enjoy the conference, starting with this first session. Thank you very much for that introduction, Greg. And thank you to MiaSat, who are the sponsors for today's webinar, uh, which is entitled Asia SATCOM Markets, Where Are We Now and Where Are We Going To? In just a moment, we'll get started with the, the webinar and the, and the conversation. Uh, but first, if you look at the screen, you'll see on the right-hand side, there's a Slida Q&A chat window. Uh, if you have any questions, you can enter your questions in that window, and various members of the discussion will address the questions that you raise them. Uh, if you've got a specific question for a specific person, please feel free to address it that way. If you have a question that you want to be answered more generally, uh, open it up for various other people to, to respond, and they will. Uh, most likely, they'll be responding in the chat window, although some of the questions will, of course, be answered in the natural course of the conversation and the discussion. Right, so joining us now will be uh, Jose de Rosario. He'll be our moderator for today. He's the NSR Research Director based in Manila. Uh, and for Northern Skies Research, he, he does a lot of quantitative modeling as well as data verification and uh, market forecasting uh, in various markets in the Asia Pacific region. He's got a lot of background in, uh, in consulting and research, particularly in the satellite industry. Uh, he's got uh, a lot of work under his belt in policy and regulatory affairs, as well as in end user demands. Um, previously, he's worked uh, with other consulting companies. Uh, he's also done a lot of work with uh, both the US and the EU governments uh, in various uh, aspects of, of NGO and, and development work in, in Manila and the Philippines, as well as the rest of Asia. Uh, and his degree is in economics uh, with a, an undergraduate in political science. So he's got a lot of, uh, lot of arrows in his quiver. Uh, joining us now, Jose Del Rosario. Thank you and welcome to our operators panel for the APSCC. The title is Where Are We and Where Are We Going? We are joined today by a very distinguished panel. We have uh, Mr. Yao Chong Lim, COO of Mayasat, based in Malaysia. And we have uh, Pak Adi Adivoso, President and CEO of uh, Pacific uh, PSN, Pacific Satellite New Santara. Uh, welcome, Pak Adi. And finally, we have Mr. Mitsutoshi Akao, Deputy Unit President of the Space Business Unit for Sky Perfect JSAT, based in Japan. Welcome, gentlemen. Uh, 
Hakadi is joining us for the moment uh, mobile, which is interesting, and I guess sign of the times. Um, so first off, um, we've been in this pandemic for about six months now. And I guess the obvious question is, how has the industry been over the past six months, generally speaking? And more specifically, how is your company doing within this pandemic? Let's start with uh, Yao from Malaysia, if you will. Uh, hi, good morning, everyone. Um, yes, you know, we are in the new norm now. So before we talk about a little bit about business, I think um, this situation, you know, uh, basically is promised to a new way to conduct our business. Uh, for example, you know, there's a lot of like a virtual meeting, whether it's through Zoom, Teams, or Google. Uh, even the exhibition itself now is go uh, online. So this is like, you know, uh, unheard of. And uh, with that itself, I think the advantage is that, you know, you probably can get a, a wider reach uh, into the audience. And I guess what we are missing here is that, you know, the FaceTime, the face-to-face -face meeting, um, the, 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 uh, the networking, that you know, we all get to be very used to. Um, for example, for myself, I know uh, I have been grounded for the longest time, you know, since end of last year until now. Uh, no complaint, but that that is the, the ways that you know uh, we can uh, foresee that you know probably in the next uh, few months until end of the year at least. Um, in terms of the business wise, um, we see that you know uh, certainly the the time spent on the TV has uh, increased. But the thing is that that not necessarily, you know, uh, turn into the uh, increase of the consumption of the bandwidth. Um, on the other hand, you know, what we see is that, you know, the data, you know, uh, usage has been increased uh, tremendously. And uh, for the last few months itself, you know, uh, when Malaysia itself uh, under the uh, movement control order, mm -hmm. uh, we see that, you know, the tremendous increase in the bandwidth. And now we sort of like, you know, coming out from that, uh, uh, con uh, movement control order and the data usage is basically is still staying there it's not coming down so that that is a good sign of it so um, in terms of the business wise uh, I would say that you know from a Miasa perspective we are you know uh, impacted you know uh, a bit but relatively is considered stable I think uh, largely due to that you know uh, we have a very good mix in terms of our uh, revenue uh, between the video and the data, especially you know, uh, for on the DDH uh, perspective, that gives us the you know the stability in terms of our uh, our revenue. Um, in terms of the um, the data, you know, uh, that sort of like you know, uh, offsetting a little bit in terms of the declining of the uh, video distribution uh, revenue. So overall itself, uh, I think uh, we are coping well, and just hope that you know there's no second wave, third wave of the. The, the lockdown, uh, otherwise, you know, uh, the situation could be uh, quite challenging. Adi, uh, going still in Southeast Asia, how, how is Indonesia and uh, how is your company coping with the pandemic? Well, uh, like uh, so yeah, uh, Yao says that we are now uh, in a different normal, and but uh, it was quite clear that uh, after maybe close to six months of this uh, situations, the government of Indonesia also have decided that they will provide uh, connectivity due to the fact that schools and everything else needs to be connected. And now schools are relatively still very close. Everybody has to do uh, an online uh, schooling. Uh, and it's a very different uh, situation in Indonesia because of the uh, government activities uh, of embarking to create what they call a digital society, this uh, situation on COVID-19 actually has accelerated that. And the way the government does it, they are taking capacity that is available both terrestrially through the cellular network, fiber optics, as well as satellite, and providing free Wi-Fi to the community. So uh, last year, they have uh, uh, ha uh, has a, what they call least capacity of close to 22 gigabits per second from various spacecraft as an interim solution to the broadband required uh, uh, for before the SMF projects uh, is up. 
And that is now relatively free full, about 90, 95, 90 to 95% full. And actually, the two weeks ago, the government has requested for an additional 16 gigabit per second to be able to be supplied in 2021. Uh, the government has embarked on a very different method that, that, that has created that the, the government is taking the burden of providing a free Wi-Fi and pay the operator. Mm -hmm. The current discussion is also on the seller side. The Minister of Education is looking how to be able to give free quotas for the students and the teacher. So from our side, our business is looking quite bright because our Nusantara One space car launched uh, last year uh, its fill factors is already 70%. And with the new 16 gigabits requirement, we probably will have a, Indonesia will have a, another situation where it requires to uh, look at other capacity beyond the Indonesian satellite. For us, I, I, I don't, the pandemic is not something nice, but from the side of the operator and especially the satellite operator is an interesting one who, uh, uh, for expansion. The, there is 45,000 schools that need to be connected and 12,500 schools will be connected in the next six months. So if we are uh, from a salad operator, we're doing okay in that sense. Glad to hear that as well. So from Southeast Asia, Malaysia, Indonesia, uh, in Indonesia, government is stepping in. Uh, demand is, is kicking to data um, and it's government led, government, uh, uh, I guess subsidized, uh, uh, market signaled. And from Malaysia, uh, your mix of, of revenue uh, makes your company um, you know, look, look to be uh, uh, you know, dealing with the pandemic well. As we move to East Asia um, in Japan, how, how is uh, JSAT doing and um, how is the environment there, uh, akao -san? Yes, uh, yes, almost about the, I think six months first. It now at, at this moment, it, the most of our employees is still is working at home, <laughs> and the so we have so established the new work, new rule established work <clears throat> under the this it, it, the working circumstances, and the it a very like the limited situation like in the, in the, in the sales and the marketing and the other administration of the operation. And so now we are, we are focused on some of the, it's the most of a vital thing is the satellite control. So usually the people is attending in the operating, operating center, the actually. So we have, so we want to try to reduce in the operating people to move to the, some of the remote operation or something like that. So something will be changing, changing in the, some of the scheme right now. And the, but the business point of view, I, think, I feel that it, we are like the uh, infrastructure company. It's very strong at this kind of circumstances I, I feel right now. Uh, the, my customer's business is, 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 more, is both in the public and private sector. It keep in the very uh, same level, it is demanded and the, so the actually, it, especially the, the uh, private sector, like the internet traffic is, is growing rapidly at this moment. So uh, we are providing a capacity a lot. And the, it, the most of things, but the, from this April, I think, it, the, especially in the mobile, like the air, airplane and the sort of maritime services, like we have the lot of damages we feel so i i cannot i cannot see the, the when it is recovering but the now the domestic flight is now recovering a slow slowly so we are expecting that kind of the uh, traffic will recovering on the in the ne next year i think still the most thing the most things i uh, it is very important is we keep it secure and the high quality services to them. 
to the and waiting for the recovering the demand, I think. Okay. So yeah. it, it sounds like there's negative impact in mm. in Japan and JSAT. Is that correct? So in terms of revenue yeah, in the past six but months? But so the little, little, mm -hmm. it, it neg neg negatively impacted the mobile application. And also, the you know, it, it, so we also doing a DTH services. <laughs> so we have the, the lot of sport event is postponed, especially mm -hmm. in the Olympic game also. Mm -hmm. like, like this kind of the event, it related to event and some of the uh, program is postponed. That 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 is some some of the negative impact. But the other the kind of the the data traffic demand will be recovering, covering that the uh, ne negative impact. I think. I see. So okay, it's so totally it, 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 it is a, I think it is stable. I think it's stable. Okay, so it sounds like it's stable for all three mm. uh, operators, three countries, <laughs> and for Adi, the. Um, the government stepping in has actually led to greater demand. So uh, you touched on, you know, mobility and market signals, um, you know, shifting. So we're in a satellite industry, it's a long-term game. We're looking at 15 years. We're looking at satellites now getting extended. Um, I had a report in Space News today that a satellite from ABS may even have a life of 42 years. So we were looking at the long-term horizon, but Given the situation today and going forward, um, over the next two to three years, are there steps that you need to take in order to remain afloat and um, you know cope with the um, the dynamics that's going on now? And after that, what do you do over the next five to seven year horizon? Um, from Mesa's point of view, um, what's your overall strategy going forward? Um. I guess in, in the short term itself, um, the broadband business is still the uh, key focus. Uh, we see uh, there's a lot of growth and demand. And um, in Malaysia perspective itself, um, there are still you know uh, many uh, places and households are currently uh, unconnected. So uh, in the short term itself, I think that's where you know uh, we we see you know we we have the advantage uh, being the uh, ISP to, uh, to connect the, the rural uh, area. Um, in the longer run itself, uh, I guess, or probably in the mid midterm itself, um, one of the key things is that, you know, given that the demand of data it is keep increasing, you know, um, we have to make sure that, you know, we have the uh, sufficient capacity to meet those demand. And um, not only that, you know, uh, how, you know, we can uh, potentially, you know, uh, lower down the cost per megabit. Uh, not just from the uh, space segment perspective. Uh, in fact, you know, it is the whole, you know, uh, value change from the space segment to your uh, equipment and uh, as well as, you know, uh, the installation cost, uh, the logics cost. So it is a whole lot of things at the end of the day. Um, that, that is the, the key area that we are focusing on. And okay. we have also uh, recently uh, procured the, uh, our next uh, generation of satellite, uh, Miasat 3D. And with that itself, you know, uh, that would help us to uh, address, you know, uh, some of those questions. Uh, the thing here is that, you know, what next, you know, uh, it's always a challenge to say that, you know, whether you build the set, build the capacity first and wait for the customer to come, or, you know, uh, you wait, the demand is coming, then only you build the satellite. So it's uh, the timing issue that we have to deal with. I see. Um, this initiative, if I'm not mistaken, um, prior to the pandemic, that was already in the works. Is it safe to say then that even with the pandemic, um, as far as Mayasad's strategy, short and long term, it's been consistent, no, no adjustments whatsoever? Um, I think our, our strategy is, uh, is consistent. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and as I say, you know, in, in the short term, I think the key is to provide the connectivity. And in the longer run itself, I think we need to think of like, you know, uh, how we can extend you know, beyond the connectivity. Uh, for example, you start to add on, you know, uh, other application, uh, for example, the IoT, and how you're going to uh, leverage on the connectivity at the rural area to provide like an e-wallet uh, kind of uh, services. Uh, so those, those, is, those are the, the next step. So in terms of the, the strategy-wise, it's pretty consistent, you know, uh, we see ourselves, you know, more and more become like a rural telecom. Hmm, okay, so it's uh, moving down the value chain. That's great. Yeah. All right. Um, Adi, um, from Indonesia uh, and for PSN, short-term and long-term strategies, any adjustments or changes? 
Well, short-term strategy, quite simple. Indonesia, since I, uh, as I told you before, has a different way of uh, reducing the digital gap by government stepping in. Uh, right now, uh, we, believe, uh, we are looking for replacements of the failed N2 uh, last April uh, to expand that, and we may increase the, that capacity substantially uh, because with the demand uh, curve that the government is predicting, uh, even the SMF 150 gigabit per second will not be enough in 2024. And also, uh, there are issues that they do not want to, to put uh, all the 150 gigabits per second user without the capability to provide them certain diversity or a backup system. So from the uh, short term, we we'll probably will have to replace the N2, which work we are working right now. And secondly is we will look at the expansion very well. The government of Indonesia is looking at uh, a quite a large amount of capacity by 2025, 2026. Uh, so as we know, satellite is not you cannot build it one day, you have to build it in three to four years time to give you comfort. So we are, we are quite uh, uh, gung-ho because the government has already uh, subjected uh, its elf uh, for a quite a larger budget for the next five years to reduce the division, the, the division of uh, the digital uh, situation in Indonesia. So satellite unfortunately is uh, it's part of the um, solution uh, and hold on a second uh, and the, the situation is that uh, there the demand is also growing not only from the uh, numbers but also the capacity per per station now the we have also the same issue with mr Yao that uh, to put uh, or to install into rural rural areas is a very uh, complicated matter, even though if the equipment and the services is relatively uh, economical, but the transportation installations and operation and maintenance in these rural areas is a big challenge to us. So we at PSN is now basically running end to end satellite hub network operation installation. So the, for all the, the ground segment and uh, the, all the VSAT. So that gives us a little bit more comprehensive solution. The government wants to have what they call end-to-end -end solution. They want signal, they call it. We don't want a only satellite. We don't only want a grand station. We want a signal in those areas. And um, a lot of money is, is is geared to this, uh, and, and, and that basically will will allows us to uh, expand in the near and the medium term. I would not be surprised in 2025 or 2027, Indonesia will grow to half a terabit per second, or just over Indonesia using the satellite. All right. Well, looks like uh, changes are are in the mix. Um, similar to. May is not doing, you know, closer to the end user via managed services. You're now delivering end-to-end -end solutions to the government. And we'll come back to that technology and, and capability issue later. So for, for Japan, um, is it the same thing over the next two to three years short term and five yeah. to seven years? <clears throat> yes, I think almost the same thing. It's the, it's the short term basis. So we are focused on the uh, same as your son, like the, uh, we are the broadband. It, the high demand. So we put the new satellite in the it's couple of years of the two satellites for HTS, like in the name of the Horizon 3E with this, this is this is a joint venture satellite with the Intelsat the two years ago. And the last year we launched a new satellite of the JC Sat 1C. That's just a new uh, HTS. That will it will capable of the lot of the capacity we providing in the Southeast Southeast Asia and Japan and also the covering Russia. So we are exploring the market in this more high uh, cost effective patterns for, you know, that to 
providing you some of the uh, good you know, internet internet or the data communication. And the, at the same time, in the long term basis, and not not so long, it may be a middle term basis. Like, so we feel that this, um, we should have some of the other. Uh, business like it's a satellite related business, not to, not the actual the certain capacity. So one of the we are challenging is some of the uh, <coughs> we are some of the partnership with Orbital Insight in the United States, and it collect collecting some of the imaging data, like the Orbital Insight or the Planet Lab, like yeah. so the, we are cust and customizing some of the, uh, the data. To, the, to each customer to selling this, selling to them. And this kind of it's still a bit of small, small business at this moment. But so we are challenging that that, that kind of the, uh, the new, new business for us. And the the other thing is the, so the long term basis, maybe our the satellite industry the will be uh, will be requested to be some the SDGs. Sustainable Development Goals. So we have to take care of something, how to remove in the space debris at this moment. So we, we, are, we started some the, uh, project with the partnership with some of the laser technologies company and the Japanese government body to the, how we can make some removing the space debris in our industry. That's, that's kind of our movement. That's great. Okay. Well, it, it looks like from the three uh, companies, there's a lot of, uh, you know, longer term vision going on. It's, it's not, you know, pandemic is, isn't stopping that, which is good. Um, but, um, and it's a good, but uh, when these initiatives come forward, then there has to be a bit of risk taking and new investments that need to come in. Uh, technology, capability, service provisioning, et cetera. So from Mayasan's point of view, as you go down the value chain, get closer to the customer, are you envisioning a short-term, mid-term technology investment or risk-taking capability? And if so, what, what, what will be those things? So um, as I mentioned earlier in itself, you know, uh, we are you know, providing connectivity um, to the, um, the rural area. And um, for now, you know, we are using our own uh, fleet of satellites. But that doesn't stopping us to uh, exploring to uh, on the the, the constellation uh, uh, satellite available. So there are a couple of those uh, in the market uh, right now. So I think from Yasa perspective is that you know we we could you know leverage on you know uh, our know how of the uh, market, uh, our uh, market access, and uh, taking advantage of the system that we put in place to serve the market. So. Uh, we are not shy away from those uh, technology, and uh, in fact, you know, we are, you know, uh, welcoming those. And uh, at the end of the day, you know, from the consumer perspective, uh, what they see is that you know, they need the connectivity. Uh, Technology-wise, is is kind of a uh, you know stick to them. Uh, just to follow up on that, you mentioned that you're you're very much willing to look into um, Leo systems. Is is this going to be a form of investment or? Do you become a, a service provider where you lease capacity from them and then resell that? Um, well, so, um, I mean, we, we, we have a, some discussion with the, uh, the, the player. Uh, what we see is that, is that you know, uh, we become their, their uh, country or the market partner uh, in, in this part of the world. So, uh, as I mentioned, you know, we have the market access uh, we know, you know, uh, where is the, the customer, we know the ecosystem. So uh, rather than, you know, for us to build the, the, the satellite or invest into it, you know, at the end of the day, we don't really have to do that. So uh, there are, you know, uh, various uh, business model that we, we can work on such that, you know, we can take advantage of uh, the, investment, the investment that we put in place. Okay. Are you at liberty to um, disclose who the Leo player is? Uh, Probably not at this stage. Not yet. Okay, yeah. we'll wait for the announcement then. Right. Great. Um, Addy, I'm glad you're back in your office. Uh, good you had a safe trip. Um, so from, from your point of view, delivering end-to-end -end services to the government, 
do you are you looking at new technologies, investments, maybe looking at Leos as well? Um, what's your investment horizon or risk taking and capability building uh, to support your you know future goals uh, in Malaysia? Well, in Indonesia, uh, the Sorry, demand, Indonesia. the in, the demand of the Indonesian and the policy of the government of Indonesia is actually requires a substantial investment in the space. And until today, uh, with the most cost-effective way for a high throughput is still a very high throughput satellite uh, geo system. Uh, not because we are against Lee or anything else. Until today, we have no, not yet been able to identify what is the real cost of a Leo when you provide down to the services to the end user. Uh, at least in the VTS on HTS, we, we know that uh, technology is mature. The government does not want us to experiment with technologies. We are doing certain thing new. Well, we're looking at very clear uh, software defined network, not only satellite, but also on the ground network uh, to be able to have some degree flexibilities and not put ourselves into a situation where mm -hmm. it cannot grow in time. Uh, but those are, I call it a little bit long-term uh, uh, situation. Uh, the current situation is we're investing of the replacement of N2. We, will, we are investing in the government satellites. So there's actually two satellites on the pipeline, um, at least. Uh, and then uh, uh, on the... Uh, uh, ground segment, uh, mm -hmm. we're looking, we're looking of as many as possible. Unfortunately, the ground segment provider now is kind of consolidated. Uh, there are and less and less ground segment with, uh, with a very large uh, network available in the world. So it's kind of narrowed down. Uh, that's where we are. And the Leo will just wait. Uh, we have been approached by several of them. But every time I ask them what is the real price per, megabit, per, per gigabyte and how much is terminal cost, I have not received any clarity yet. Clarity in terms of the actual price points or? Yeah. Price as well as uh, power requirement because I took an assumption unless you have a, a face array antenna, uh, how much does it cost? If you don't have a face array antenna, you have at least to have two uh, two tracking antennas and what's the power, what's all those things. So, uh, because we are doing already end-to-end, -end, so we know how difficult the rural areas, mm -hmm. it's easy to say rural areas is, uh, is the target market. Uh, satellite has two markets in my mind. One is the high end, we call it the mobility, as you probably know, the aircraft, the uh, cruise, and, and also the very rural. So we've been always concentrating in the very rural because in my country, the top of the line, the aircraft and the uh, ships uh, is not yet uh, a, a substantial market. So that is a different set of uh, discipline, different set of financial and economics needs to be looked at. Okay. All right. Uh, for Japan, um, two to three year and then five to seven year investment horizon. Mm -hmm. um, Akao-san? Yeah. <clears throat> uh, as you know, if fully, just we really talk, talking about some of the Leo services, right? <clears throat> so as you know, the, we, are, we invested in some of the new company for the LeoSat <laughs> at the time before. Uh, so the unfortunately that, that the LeoSat is, uh, itself is uh, chapter 11. Now also the the one web also they they getting a, getting a chapter eleven one one time and but now I heard that they uh, acquired by some other consortium in the British and some the India. So actually the this uh, this kind of Leo Leo services we don't know at, at this moment how it realize it is service at it, at this moment for the Japanese customer and and the, and also the Asian customers. So that we just we are wait and see for, but but the, we are also some the getting our job with some the only all, only for the gateway service for them, providing right now. <coughs> and so, maybe I think 
now it is the COVID the circumstances. I think it, it, the personal thing. I think that will be a there will be some opportunity to many company will they thinking of some reforming their business. Each company, so that will be, I think this will be a chance to have a make a new partnership or some collaboration and some finally come to some M and A. Some not only satellite operator or uh, telecom service provider or <laughs> any uh, teleport service provider. They. They are very now severe to um, survive in the future. They have to make some each other. Be, they're very difficult to be uh, be alone. They accelerate some some collaboration or the partnership. That will be a chance to some investment or any other the chance to have the collaborate. I think. Okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, long term, once again, um, since the investment and uh, venture with LeoSat didn't, uh, didn't take place, mm -hmm. then you're looking at you know, another mm -hmm. Leo player uh, to sort of partner with, invest in. Okay, so I think a lot of discussions when we come to satellite always lead to Leo for, for some reason. Um, so for Mayasat, uh, you're looking at and talking to a Leo uh, entity and looking to you know, look at that, reselling the service, packaging it for managed services. So to you, they're not really a, a threat. They're more of an opportunity. What's your overall sort of uh, thinking in terms of Leo systems in general and what it means for Mayasat and Malaysia in particular? I, I think certainly they are married onto the Leo system itself. Uh, but again, you know, it's not given uh, as Pak Adi, you know, mentioned clearly is that, you know, there are still, you know, uh, a lot of questions need to be answered. Uh, for example, what, what is the cost per megabit, uh, the ground terminal cost, um, especially if we were to serve uh, the market segment that we are currently in, in, in the rural area, uh, how, you know, uh, that can be addressed. Um, having to say that, you know, we, be, we are still, you know, we will always remain open that, you know, uh, on the, the, the technology itself, you know, if it makes sense for us, so uh, we will uh, work together with, uh, the, the relevant parties uh, to provide the service into Malaysia. Um, for now itself, uh, you know, for the very near short term, uh, we have invested into a, a new satellite and that, that is our current focus. And uh, so that, that will be uh, able to uh, serve our immediate requirement. So in, in the midterm itself, um, I think we, we are looking at, you know, what, what are the, the best uh, platform and technology for us to uh, continue to serve the requirement. So yeah. while the over time, the expectation will increase and um, not only on, on the capacity itself, uh, in general, people will expect that, you know, uh, the, the cost of delivery of the service uh, will be uh, uh, improved accordingly. Do you see Leo's changing our industry? Um, you know, they've always said it, it's a game changer, the technology itself, but on the business side, um, is it going to change, uh, you know, the satellite industry going forward drastically, or it's just another pipe? I guess this is a is a addressing in a different uh, market segment. Um, there are certain market uh, itself, you know, um, the the geo HTS is certainly, you know, uh, at least you know for now what we know now is a has a clear advantage uh, over the Leo system. Um, so I would say that you know it, it would not be like a entirely change unless they you know there's some uh, breakthrough in terms of the, the ground terminal, um, and also one don't forget that you know one the other big question to have to address is the regulatory uh, issue in each country, uh, especially when we come to the the, the very fragmented uh, Asian region. And I think that's where you come in, right? You were saying they have the technology. Yeah but we have the local presence. We know the Malaysian market well. Yeah. So it, it's an ideal partnership if the technology does work. All right, um, Adi, is it the same? Uh, Pak Adi, is it the same Same views? Are Leos a threat to you, or an opportunity? What's your overall uh, you know, assessment of, of these systems? Well, uh, like I said before, our main PSN main goal is to provide capacity and interconnections into the rural areas. Yes, there are certain mobilities uh, demand, but 
for Indonesia at this stage of time or in the next five years, it's not going to be a, a majority of the play. So the sensitivity of uh, easiness to install, the sensitivity of the cost per megabits per second, all those things comes in play. Uh, so we are just waiting uh, for Leo to be able to mature uh, from this stage of time and allow us to get a better understanding. Again, we are open. Why do, we are open. Actually, PSN is open to Leo to. Mio to Geo from the satellite position. And we actually may have to expand into a certain terrestrial mode to be able to become more economically in provisioning the uh, internet into uh, very far areas, but maybe we'll have two, three villages. Uh, those are things we we're looking at. So uh, from our position is that Leo has to come up with a clear position where they want to be mm -hmm. and what is their target market and how is the business going to be deployed. For us, is the rural areas. Yes, if there are mobility, we look at it, but that's not going to get our full attention. Okay, great. And for now, uh, what I'm hearing is you don't, you don't see the business case or the proposition for you to come in and commit to a Leo system at the moment at least. Yes, at the moment we haven't seen it. Okay. Um, for Japan, um, I guess you've you've uh, you've you've committed to LeoSat and it didn't work, so you stay committed to Leo. But there's uh, new players on board, right? Well, OneWeb is still there, uh, SpaceX is is there, then Amazon is in the action, Tetasat is there. So if, if we may ask, um, if you were to pick and choose an investment which you will make to replace LeoSat, which, which players look really favorable to you and why? Uh, this is very difficult. I, can, I can't answer that question <laughs> at this moment. <laughs> but the, so we have studied a lot of things we did working together with LeoSat at the time. So mm -hmm. the, Still they, uh, still, they have the market, I think. But some, some special, special market they will have. But so, uh, but still, I, I believe that the uh, geo satellite service, that will be, geo will be a core for us, I think. Mm -hmm. <coughs> core business for us. The, the most most different thing is, is the geo satellite is one satellite can complete in the one business. But the for the Leo satellite we is the constellation. They have to keep investing to a small satellite, a lot of satellite. And if the some some satellite is is, is lack <coughs> lacking, so they cannot complete in the service, entire services. Okay. That is some, something something a different type of services so that I think that the but the uh, I'm sure that a lot of people is the customer is very much interested in that in that, that such kind of service especially and the especially for the uh, mobile cell phone company <coughs> or any other some the uh, infrastructure company they are very much interested in that. But so, as uh, uh, the two other gentle, gentlemen said, that the, we don't have the, any or uh, some specific image of the how much mm. does it cost, how is the quality of the, the ground terminal. We cannot imagine there. So the, it, it's very difficult at this moment. So the deciding as the, the which one is the better. I think. Okay. Um, yeah. If I may, maybe review um, your investment with Viosat. The, their value proposition was it's intersat like links going to the enterprise market or going the consumer broadband market. Um, so very high end type of customers. Mm -hmm. And I guess uh, going forward, is this the same kind of benchmarks that you're looking for for, for a Leo player as well? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's, it's the same. Okay. All right, so, so far um, we've talked about your home markets, um, Japan, Malaysia, Indonesia, but we're a very regional global business. Um, a single footprint really covers, you know, regions, uh, land mass, oceans. Um, going back to your business case, your, your strategies, 
Um, what's your outside of country strategy going forward? Um, if, if there is one, um, the revenue mix between the whole market and the international market, how is that going? How is that looking today? And how will that look uh, going forward? Um, Yao, would you uh, like to start? Yeah, so in, in, in Myasap uh, itself, as, as I mentioned, you know, we have a good mix between the uh, video and the uh, uh, data business. Um, in the video business itself today, you know, we are still you know, one of the uh, regional uh, hotbed in terms of the channel distribution, uh, especially in the, the uh, HD channel. Uh, over time, you know, we see that you know, the, the, the growth of that business itself um, may not be you know, uh, at the pace that, that we want to. Uh, we still have a, a good presence uh, in terms of this uh, the HD neighborhood on, on the satellite. Um, how we see is that you know, <clears throat> especially you know for the past few years and moving forward, I, I guess probably uh, it will not change that much. Is that you know, it's more and more that the country is in the uh, in the in the market itself is an inward looking uh, into the country. Um, being whether it's in uh, Malaysia, Indonesia, or uh, other part of the world. Um, fulfilling, you know, the the, the uh, internal requirement, especially bridging the uh, to get in the country, uh, is the key priority for the the government. So, um, in general, you know, for those uh, operator that have a home market or, or home advantage, I want to put it, you know, uh, that would put the, the the operator in in a better position. Um, in terms of the regional wise. Uh, apart from the video business, uh, we are assessing, you know, few others uh, uh, country, whether, you know, is there a, a scenario whereby we can duplicate, you know, uh, our uh, success story in Malaysia into other part of the world. Uh, but that itself is still preliminary and uh, I would say that it's a little bit more uh, opportunistic at this point in time. Okay. Yeah. Adi, your point of view? Well, we again, um, we have a home market that is relatively quite large, but we are looking to also have a coverage beyond Indonesia, but probably limited to the area we know well with this, the ASEAN countries and surrounding areas. Uh, now, because any bulk, any new satellite, we are not looking at LEO, we're talking about the geosystems. Uh, the bulk of the capacity in ASEAN will be for our home market. So we do have a certain advantage on that particular situation. And we will be happy to have a discussions with anyone within the coverage to see whether they are interested to uh, look at a, a satellite with a capacity that is already more than 50 or 60% uh, mark because uh, HDS, we concentrate only HDS. We don't have a, a very good uh, business in, in video, we do have very small, not, not significant, not far away from me as that or even PG Telecom. So we concentrate on broadband and uh, right now, uh, any broadband uh, satellite or uh, HTS required almost a fix where the gateway is going to be, where the beam's gonna be, what capacity is gonna be. So you have to have an anchor market to be able to decide how, what kind of a satellite and where is your main market and what is your upside outside that particular market. That gives us a certain degrees of advantage because now our biggest customers is provisioning for the people through the government uh, uh, budget. So that, that helps us to reduce the, the risk uh, quite substantially. Okay. And uh, for Japan, um, any thoughts on going international? Yes. Uh, our international business, is, I think, the only history of 20 years, I think. Just 20 years we started. Uh, before that, in the, before the 2000, as I remember the 1998, almost the revenue from the international market will be zero. At this moment, so the, uh, they're talking about satellite business unit. Now in the internet revenue of the uh, global market, global division is, is the more than 25% of the total. So I want to be a uh, for including up to the uh, more than 30% 30, 30 
within the within a couple of the years, I think. So especially we, it, we are very strong, it, it, it good partner and good customer in the Southeast Asia and the East Asian region. So we are talking with closely with what, what they are thinking of in the future. So we, in order to realize in the providing a very good service for them. So maybe a very, very good, strong engine to be a real moving forward to our company. I think. Okay, mm -hmm. so moving from 25% of your revenue base or your business base to 30% and looking at Southeast Asia, mm -hmm. precisely where uh, yeah. Mayasat and PSN are working. So perhaps the three of you can can talk and uh, you know have partnerships and you know open up. Yeah, also also the, the Mayasat and the PSN is a very good partners. We are talking it closely, and so uh, it's a very good friend, I think. Okay, so. Asia, um, it's a big region. We have the Pacific Ocean region, we have Southeast Asia, East Asia, South Asia. It's, you know, big, big land mass, big ocean regions, uh, very ideal for satellites. But um, Yao mentioned that landing rights and regulatory issues are, are hampered by that. Um, is that front improving uh, now that you want to go internationally improve your, your revenue base? Is Asia still regulatorily a challenge uh, for your customers to tap into international markets or is the landscape improving? Uh, yeah, we want to start? Um, I, I guess it, it depends on, you know, uh, which market segment that you're looking at. If you're just providing a pure bandwidth, uh, I guess, you know, uh, we have a lesser issue. Like for example, today, you know, uh, we are distributing quite a number of uh, uh, international channel uh, in the Asian region and uh, we do not have issue uh, in that respect. Uh, however, you know, if you want to provide like an uh, end-to-end solution as what we are doing in, in Malaysia on the broadband to uh, other country, uh, I guess on, on that perspective itself is going to be challenging uh, unless you have a local partner or you set up a local presence uh, and things like that. Um, from from what we see is that you know moving forward uh i, I can foresee that there's more collaboration between the uh, operator um, especially when you talk about the uh, hts uh, capacity so in order to get the cost per megabit down uh it is the economy of scale you need to have a relatively large uh, uh payload of satellite in order to be able to achieve that so from a single entity itself uh so unless you know you have the backing by certain you know a uh, government or whatnot otherwise it could be quite challenging for us to to uh, achieve that kind of uh, economy so under that scenario itself um i was foresee that you know uh there's more collaboration be between the operator and uh, each of us you know we have our own respective market and uh, to ensure that there's no uh conflict of uh, uh, interest so that that's kind of model i would Think that you know it's going to be you know see more in the future. Okay, so in terms of a broad uh, stroke, it, it's easing at least. It's it's yeah. good news. The regulatory landscape in Asia. Um, Adi, do, would you agree with that statement? That the well, regulatory uh, environment in our region is the easing? Uh, well, the regulatory environment is uh, a little bit relaxed, but it's still being protected by uh, people uh, by each countries. Uh, respectively, including our country, we have want to make sure that there is a, a security, a continuous security of space capacity. Also, we like to also, the, that, that means there is a balance, but because of Indonesia now required more than 40 gigabits per second, and there is no Indonesian satellite, totally we have a 40 gigabits per second as of January, 2021, uh, uh, that, that means for the, re for the requirements of the Indonesian uh, economy, it will probably have more relaxed situation. But I agree with uh, Akausan and Yao that we have to work together to be able to provide competition uh, to, sorry about the background now, competition to uh, the areas. But, what I like to, to also say to you is that even if the regulatory is relaxed, 
most customer wants to see an end-to-end -end, uh, uh, solution. Meaning if uh, uh, a partner wants to come in into, let's say, into Indonesia uh, uh, or provide satellite capacity, those days are very limited. They have to provide an end-to-end. -end. It's not just selling capacity. Well, they can sell capacity to your partner in, in Indonesia, in this case, to one of the visa operator. But at one stage of time, they have to be responsible to become a system integrator. We look at the future that the space network with the advent of very sophisticated processor and the advent of the ground network and its cloud, uh, it will be very difficult to segregate the network like it used to be, okay? People now buy hub from company A, company B, company C and put it up there, yeah, the thinking. But in the old, in the, the way we looked at it is that with the access to the API of the processor and the cloud-based network uh, where you can just buy hub capacity from the cloud in the future, that is getting more difficult to, to have a segregated situation. Uh, we consider this is feasible in the next uh, five years from now. And you probably know that satellite have a long-term situation. So unfortunately, we have to look at that possibility. Most of the Leo and Mio is already looking at that. The Geo people has not looked at very carefully because they don't need to have a sophisticated network. But the Leo and the Mio now, it's a network. It's, you can't not take a capacity from Leo or Mio. You have to take the whole network. And that... Uh, unfortunately, I think Adi froze. Um, Akao-san, <laughs> would you like to uh, uh, yes, yes. comment on the regulatory front? Yes, uh, 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 the two gentlemen said that be the edge efficient oh, and competitive so uh, so oh. so that's basically uh, hi i'm back sorry some is the call come in so that's basically where we are it has to be a network in the future okay all right um akausan uh, the regulatory environment easing um... yeah. not only the asian region is very complicated hmm. it's a long time that the, the bells each small country, they have a, a, a unique regula regulatory issue. So that will be not, not only uh, some the national security, but also they have the, all the government should protect their customers, their domestic customers. So they are very severe for the, especially the foreign company come to the, their home country to providing a service directly. That's why it, it as we understand understanding the local it, it service provider like the, the big big satellite of the like Niasat and PSN and not not only that that the big satellite operator they are very small the teleport Vsat operator we call we have to find out something these kind of the com company to have a uh, relationship with them so to Providing their service to the each country, I think. But the, I, I, rather than that, so the, I feel that so now the more new services coming in the, so rapidly, I think, I think each government cannot follow up at that speed, I think. That was something the complication is something very, the gap is so long, longer and longer in, in the time, time by time like the uh, drone kind of communication, like the, the other it, it new frequency, the Leo, Leo services. So a lot of new services coming in. I think at this moment, it, it, the, each country is regulated, it cannot follow up, I think. Okay, so yeah. it's, still, it's still not to the level where you want it to yeah. be eased, especially with new technologies coming in. Uh, as as Pak Adi mentioned, cloud, that's... Yeah. Uh, Cloud is coming all over, and uh, no. you know regulations have to keep pace. Mm -hmm. um, I think we're we're almost up with time, so I will ask my two last questions. So, following up on the regulatory environment, um, it's been argued that here in Asia, even though it's a large market, large land mass, last, large ocean region, um, there are still a lot of operators out there, 
and there's a lot of excess capacity. Um, do you see consolidation happening? Uh, should it happen? Will it happen? Um, well, what's your viewpoint, um, starting with you, yeah, on consolidation in Asia? I think this has been talking for the longest time, you know, about right. a consolidation. Right. Um, in short term, answer is I, I don't foresee that. Um, um, given that, you know, uh, the national pride coming in, um, given that, you know, there's a, a different uh, philosophy, different uh, valuation, you know, uh, from the company themselves. Uh, I, in, in short term, I, I don't see that happen. Should it happen though? Is it good for the, for the Asian market if they consolidate? Or? Yeah, I mean, con consolidation, I think it, it is good, but uh, again, you know, um, it's easy to say and done. Okay, Adi, your view on consolidation? Well, uh, this sounds like a very, very old story about uh, call a national carrier. In the old days, we have, uh, even today, Garuda, and we'll have Philippine Airlines, we'll have Malaysian Airlines, and it's still existing because there is a consideration that there is a need of they have depend, uh, independencies about uh, uh, transportation, uh, even though in the United States there is no more national carrier. So the uh, the cons human in in Europe it start becoming the Air France and KLM is getting together. So if you look at the historical that one, it's still quite com difficult to see a consolidations to take a togetherness in such a way the regulatory issues, which company register what, because if it's like in my country, uh, the maximum foreign ownership is 37% and uh, uh, the maximum foreign ownership is 67%. So they do have to have an Indonesian uh, uh, partner to get the license. So if you consolidate outside Indonesia, you become a foreign uh, entity and then you have a follow a certain set of different regulations. So. For me, consolidation uh, needs a much more bigger heart uh, and more complicated, as Mr. Yao say. But I believe a cooperation is a much easier to achieve. Beyond, uh, once we cooperate, we have a much better understanding uh, about how the requirements of each, I call it cooperation partners, to be able to look at whether it makes sense to in the very long future to consolidate or, in, or expand the cooperation in many more uh, way or forms. Uh, satellite getting bigger to be able to reduce the cost per bits, uh, meaning that even in Indonesia at 21 square degrees, uh, everything you pump uh, on K-band uh, is very difficult to go beyond 200 gigabits per second. Uh, so there are people who said, ah, oh, we can make a satellite of one terabit but that will cover the one third of Asia. So that cooperation is feasible, but the consolidation like forcing by other companies in North America or in Europe trying to grab the situation is gonna be quite uh, difficult. Uh, and especially now, uh, yes, money is always difficult, but money is not impossible anymore in this part of the world. Okay, just a follow up, Adi, Pak Adi. Um, so cooperation, and I agree with your point, um, who would lead the initiative? Would it be individual companies such as your own cooperating with, you know, uh, Mayasat or JSAT, or should it be a government-led initiative on a regional basis, perhaps? Um, what, what's your view on that? Well, the way I looked at it, it's much better to allow the private sectors to find the cooperation. The government has a very different set of mind uh, and it's going to take forever because uh, they have a certain set of a different agenda than most of the private sectors. So from my point of view, it has to start from the private sectors and, and sanctioned by the government. But I would avoid government intervention into, into, into this kind of a cooperation. Akao-san, do you agree? Yeah, I, I fully agree with Adil-san. The, the one thing I, 
I personally talked with a lot of the company with some the consolidation with Asian, Asian satellite operator. Every time in it, it, the in the term of the business issue, business wise, that we we can make in some getting some agreement, but the almost okay, all the cases that the we can we have to stop with the, some of the orbital slot issues. It, each company the orbital slot have the that is national asset. So at the, all, all the time we're talking about the consultation or the amen the such as amen the like the, the which slot we they cannot release each country cannot release the, their slot. That will be a day the stop in the consultation with the, in the satellite operator. That most of the things. That thing, I think, um, should be something. The time will be changing. So each government will sh may will maybe a something more flexible. But the but the, the way to moving forward is the easy way for just as you said. We are private sector. We talking with some the, starting some the cooperation. And understand is maybe after that something it, it, we can find a way. I think. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, final question before your closing remarks. So, um, one pressing issue now is five uh, G repurposing of C band. So a two part question. So what what are your views on what's going to happen with C band being repurposed for five G in Asia, in your individual countries, and what is your five G play? Uh, Yao, let's begin with you. So, um, in, in Malaysia itself, um, that has been a plan that put in place to uh, clear the, uh, especially under the, the, uh, extended mm -hmm. C-band uh, bandwidth. Uh, that plan had been put in place. Um, again, I know uh, it takes time for, for uh, all parties to uh, agree upon on the plan, but eventually we will see that, you know, uh, it, it's just a matter of time that, especially on the extended C band, that will be reallocated for the five G uh, services. Now, having to say that, um, there is still a, a way that you know, uh, we as a satellite operator can continue to use that uh, bandwidth uh, to serve our needs uh, on a non-interference basis. So, we know that you know for the three and a half G itself, uh, the, when the five G roll out, it mostly it will you know start off or concentrated uh, in the uh, urban area. Uh, where else, you know, uh, the rural area, it will take time for them to roll out. So on that basis itself, you know, uh, we will be able to continue to use that uh, capacity to serve uh, our customer. Um, in the longer run, uh, we are also uh, exploring whether, you know, uh, that is a, a way that we can provide a hybrid uh, service. Um, for example, the fixed wireless uh, uh, assessed using both the uh, terrestrial and uh, the satellite uh, on the spectrum. So, in terms of the uh, readiness itself, uh, um, we are still, you know, uh, in discussion with uh, all parties to uh, facilitate, you know, the the government uh, direction to to reallocate the bandwidth. Okay, all right, Pak Adi, uh, C band repurposing in five G. Well, yes, uh, the government of Indonesia has basically put a principle that the extended C-band will be used for the, for the 5G, but they are still not yet quite clear how to make the compensations for the satellite that has the extended C-band or whether they can coexist uh, uh, for uh, in some areas uh, regarding the, like Mr. Yao was saying, is that 5G will be starting in the city, but if you put a gateway of five of extended C-band far away, what you do? So that 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 compensation and that mechanics from evicting the satellite from the extended C-band is still not go, not yet firm, formalized. But so we'll uh, because most of our spacecraft right now, both telecom and ours, have an extended C-band, and most of them are relatively pretty new. So how do we do that? How does the government uh, do that? That's something needs to be thought. Meanwhile, the government budget today is to 
focus on the eliminating the digital divide. So those are the things that a government has to look at. Okay. Akao-san, your views on 5G and, and C-band repurposing? In Japan case, like the, uh, initially the C-band user is not so many in Japan for satellite, satellite user. So the, because of the, uh, at the C-band frequency, there are a lot of, because the broad, broadcasts are using the C-band for the mi microwave, uh, terrestrial microwave transmission from, from the old time. So that is the, initially the, some of the C-band satellite spectrum is, is very much limited. But the, but at the same time, we all we already already uh, discussed with the government. Government initiated some the frequency coordination meeting with the uh, 5G operator and the satellite operator like us. So we have already agreed with uh, everything for the frequency allocation and how to compensate and the, how to protect protecting ex existing customers. So now uh, the 5G is now service is now starting at this time. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, we're on top of the R. Um, so final, final and closing comments. And uh, let's do the reverse. Let's start with Akao-san. Um, so the session is, is entitled, Where Are We and Where Are We Going? So closing remarks, please. Where are we as a satellite operator, as an industry? And where are we going going forward? Akao-san, please. Yes, now it, we are living in some difficult time under the COVID. But so I feel it, this satellite business is very uh, strong, even if it, in, the, in these days, these days. So uh, we have to keep in a very uh, high quality service to the customer. And we, it's a very good chance to be our, uh, some of the existence of the companies. So now uh, we are keeping on, on the business in, in going forward. Is we are we are being positive right now. Okay, excellent. Uh, Pakadi, your views? Well, right now we are busy uh, in Indonesia for the digital gap. Uh, we keep on investing, uh, and uh, we look that the satellite field is providing an essential service to provide a digital society over in Indonesia, and uh, we also look forward. Uh, in trying to get more cooperations among the uh, operator around the region uh, to all of us can uh, make sure we uh, can coexist because it's going to be a, a, uh, also a choppy situations where other countries may have uh, too much capacity, other countries have demand capacity. So uh, I would stress, out, stress quite clearly cooperation would be a, uh, something we need to look at very seriously. Great. And finally, Mr. Yao. Um, so we are currently, uh, you know, busy rolling out, you know, uh, our uh, community, wi community Wi-Fi services in Malaysia, and we're working uh, closely with the government to uh, assist the government to basically uh, close the digital gap uh, in, in, the, in the country. And uh, in the meantime, we also, uh, making sure that you know we have the enough uh, capacity to serve the uh, requirement and in the longer run uh, as uh, Paadi say you know uh, what next you know after our Miasa 3D launch so uh, then the next thing we'll be looking at is the cooperation uh, with uh, the regional operator and uh, to ensure that you know uh, we have uh, the necessary uh, uh, capacity to serve the ever increasing demand in, in, in the country. So overall, I think uh, we stay positive that, you know, uh, moving forward, uh, that, that is probably the new norm uh, of the central operator, the data. Great. Well, excellent. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for your time, for your insights, and uh, good luck to your companies. Uh, stay safe. And uh, thank you so much once again for participating in our webinar. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much for that, Jose, and thank you to all of the panelists. Uh, it was excellent to have you on, Pak Adi, uh, Kao-san, and, uh, and Yao from Miasat. And thank you to Miasat uh, for sponsoring this conversation, this discussion today. Please join us next week for another webinar, and we look forward to having you with us then.